Hi, my name is Adam Adley, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to effectively use the back annotation feature in Intel Cortis Prime 20.3. Consider the scenario when you're trying to close timing near the end of a design cycle, and you're seeing lots of Fmax noise during a seed sweep. You suspect that your design is hard to place. That is, you may be pushing the device limits with clocking DSPs or RAM. When you do find a good placement solution, how do you preserve it? Well, there are two common ways to preserve a Quartus project compilation, but in this video, we're only going to focus on one. Design partitions are a more coarse-grained approach that preserves an entire partition hierarchy's placement and routing. The placement and routing assignments are lost upon recompilation of that partition. On the other hand, back annotation only preserves the placement assignments for design entities. Rather than locking down the compilation, Back annotation leaves flexibility for the placement of adjacent logic. As mentioned, back annotation selectively saves certain resource assignments from a previous compilation. This preserves the current fit for future compilations while maintaining flexibility around the placement and routing of adjacent logic in a design. In the screenshot in the slide, you can see an example of DSP and RAM location assignments. There may be a number of cases where you may want to preserve the fit. Back annotation is most often used in guided seed exploration. Conceptually, guided seed exploration is a workflow where seed sweeps are done in two passes. An initial seed sweep is conducted to explore the design space and find good placement of resources. Once it is complete, the best known placement in the first sweep is locked down to help guide the fitter to explore similar solutions in search of higher FMAX in a second sweep. With motivations in mind, I'm going to talk about how to use the back annotation feature in practice. There is one prerequisite to back annotate your design. It must be compiled up to the place snapshot in order to have placement assignments that can be preserved. The supported resources you can back annotate are pins, DSP, RAM, clock, and clock spine assignments. In turn, these assignments can be saved directly to the QSF or a specified tickle file which can later be sourced. All this can be done either through the Quartus CDB shell command or through the Quartus graphical user interface. From the Quartus CDB shell command, you can specify the types of resources you want to be back annotated by using their corresponding flags. Additionally, you can use the file flag and argument to specify an output file to write the assignments to instead of the project's QSF. Finally, you can use the filter flag to provide a tickle regular expression to only emit resource assignments for entities matching by name. You may find it easier to back annotate your design from the graphical user interface. The back annotation dialog box can be launched by clicking the back annotate assignments action item in the assignments menu. With an understanding of how we could use back annotation, let's examine a real-world case study on how it can be useful. We have a design that's heavily centered around the SP chains. It has only a single clock. We use the timing analyzer and chip planner to investigate our compilations for this design. We notice that there are critical timing paths between the SP chains. The placement of those chains relative to one another is absolutely critical to our design. This makes timing closure especially sensitive with respect to DSP placement. So, we conducted an initial seed sweep, which yielded us a selection of different placements with great variation in their Fmax. Our results show that seed 3 has the best Fmax in this sweep. In our investigation, we used the chip planner to observe the different DSP placements in our initial seed sweep. In order to preserve the best known DSP placements from seed 3, we'll back annotate the assignments into a tickle file. This can be easily done using the back annotate Quartus CDB shell command with the DSP and file flags. The next step is to source the DSP assignments into the QSF we want to apply them to. In our case, it would be the same Quartus project while we run a second seed sweep on it. With the DSP placement from seed 3 lockdown, we ran a second pass seed sweep. This gave us better timing results on average. We can notice a few patterns that resulted from locking down DSPs in our design, which is known to be very timing sensitive to their placement. First, the Fmax spread is reduced. Secondly, the distribution of achieved Fmax is anchored very closely to seed 3 which was back annotated in the first seed sweep. And finally, by exploring similar solutions, we managed to achieve a slightly better Fmax than what was achieved in the first sweep. To conclude our case study, we used the chip planner to see that different soft logic placement and routing was explored, all while preserving the best discovered DSP placement from the first pass seed sweep. While our case study highlighted how effective back annotation can be for DSP placement, it's worth mentioning how back annotation of clocks and clock spines can be important. There's a number of interactions between placement decisions and clock region constraints. Designs with high clock demand can be hard to fit. Specifically, clock congestion can make determining legal solutions for clock regions quite difficult. 
Locking down known legal clock placements can solve this problem, saving you from many potentially failed compilations. To wrap up, let's recall that back annotation allows the preservation of assignments from the current FIP for future compilations to help guide the fitter. While back annotation can be useful for seed exploration and hard to place designs, it does not guarantee better results in every case. It's not a magic bullet solution, but rather it's a powerful tool if used effectively on a case by case basis. I hope that this video was an informative and practical introduction to back annotation in Intel Cordis Prime 20.2. To learn more about this topic, you can follow the links listed in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to pass them along. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and share it. To keep up to date with the latest news, events, and information, please do subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.